and welcome to the Whiskey Dan Radio Show. Tonight, uh, I actually have a guest on. And, uh, what's your name, man? You know well what my name is. All right, we got... <laughs> Son of a bitch. All my right, right off the bat. My name is Max Dannenberg, and I'm being held hostage. <laughs> Please send help. His address is 123 help. <laughs> All right, uh, tonight we're drinking a Bushmills Red Bush, and that's not a euphemism. It, that's just what the label is. And Max here isn't a drinker, unlike your boy Whiskey Dan, where uh, I do this shit for free on a weekly basis. Um, not only talk about it, but drink it. But uh, Bushmills Red Bush, it's an Irish whiskey, so not quite as bitter as Scotch whiskey, but uh, it's uh, it'll it'll put some hair on your taint. For sure. I like it a lot. You can get a, I think the bottle, it's a little pricier. It's cheaper than Jameson. I think it comes right around $28 for a fifth of it. Um, and there's three different types of bush, bush mills that I'm aware of. There's the, I think it's, uh, there's the white, the red, and I think like a blue, maybe it's green. I don't know. I got the red one. I've had the white one before, but it's not the one we're working with tonight. Uh, I really enjoy it. What, what did you think? Uh, well, first off, I don't drink very much, as you said before, um, Mostly not not out of principle or anything, but just because I'm very cheap, <laughs> and I don't want to spend money. Uh, and that's the end of the sentence. I just don't want to spend money. So like, in, well, you can get like really cheap. Like I had Old Crow on here last episode, and that stuff's like eleven dollars for one bottle. Um, yeah, I don't want to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> just like so, just it's basic principle. The, don't want to spend money. Yeah, the only reason that I'm actually drinking tonight at all is because. Uh, you poured this glass and said, "Here, drink this." <laughs> uh, if I if there was an entry fee or if I was to pay for it, um, I don't think I would have bought it. In fact, I've you know been drinking for quite a bit, um, on and off here. I think I probably spent maybe a hundred dollars because the funny oh, thing is, if, well, here's I remember the, when I was twenty one. <laughs> no, here, here's what's funny. So if you go out with a group of friends or you go to a bar. Or even if you're just by yourself, and or, and you you know people like to drink around other people. Nobody wants to drink alone because then you look like a loser. I disagree. But okay. <laughs> so, I mean that's fine. You well, know. you would in okay if you're drinking alone in public, you look like a loser. Um, I guess so I'm a loser. so the best way, the best thing to do for a cheap guy like me is you tell everybody that you don't drink, and everyone goes, "What? What are you talking about? Oh, come on! You go, and you're just like, no, no, I don't drink." And it was like, oh, oh, well, let me get you. That's just because you don't know what you like. Here, try this. And boom, you get free drinks. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, yeah, that's true. Because, like, typically, I've already had a few in me. And there's someone <laughs> go like, oh, I don't really drink. Like, hey, hey, barkeep, let's get two of them over here right now. You know, then then I'm, you know, my tab. Here's your tab, sir. $57. Like, fucking hell. See, I don't think I have yeah. ever spent, like, combined purchases of alcohol more than $100. I did buy some Bailey's once. Um, it's like the coffee creamer? Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. That's, a good, that's some good stuff. It man. was good. Um, I never finished it, though. It was a tiny little bottle, mm -hmm. and I left it uh, in California with a buddy of mine who probably had finished it the second after I was gone. <laughs> so Sounds like a good friend. That's about it. I bought that, and, you know, I've bought, like, a beer at a show or something like that. Um, actually, speaking of shows... The uh, last show I went to was, oh wait, what was it? No, it wasn't the last show I went to, but the last really, really good one that I remember was They Might Be Giants in, uh, oh shoot, what's the name? Uh, Solana Beach, and they had they had free beer that night, so really, of course I was happy. I, I have <laughs> never been to a show that had free. Beer. Every time I go to a every time I go to a show. Um, it's at least eight dollars for one beer, and it's like Bud Light, and I'm like, that is more than an entire fucking six pack. <laughs> but whatever. But yeah, it was nice. Um, I'm sure it was good beer. I couldn't really tell because you know I don't drink very often. Um, it you know it was it was definitely alcohol, and people liked it enough to spill it on my shoes. Uh, but, <laughs> but other than that, that's just that's just about it. Yeah. So with this with this alcohol, it's um, it tastes like. Like pain, yeah. D does it taste like pain to you? Because to me, it brings me joy. <laughs> like, because this is this is the type of whiskey where you, where you take a sip of it, and at first you're kind of like, ah, that's a little like harsh, and like you feel it down your esophagus, just slowly warm everything up inside you. And that and that's I think that's why I like whiskey so much because the taste of it isn't 
the best part. The best part is that warm feeling get inside. And then since I've been, every time I'm inebriated, I'm usually happier in general. So just like good times, man. Like the taste just brings me good times. Yeah, I don't know about that, Chief. With how hot it is outside right now, I don't think I want something warming me up. Well, that's why I got that AC on polar <laughs> in this one bedroom apartment. It is so it is so hot right now that I could go outside and I, I breathe in and I feel like just moisture is in my lungs. Um, well, because okay. It's just like warm air. It's like somebody's just breathing constantly outside and that's that's what's causing well, it to well, be so you're hot. In, you're in San Diego area for like five years. Yes. It's yeah. hot as shit there too. And like, oh, but it's a dry heat, so oh. it's not as bad. Like, I understand that, but still, like, the, it's the fucking sun. You step outside and it's like three o'clock full sun. That's got to take it out of you too, right? That's true. And where I was living, there wasn't a lot of wind, um, unless you were right on the ocean, then it was, it was great. But you go a little bit inland and... Uh, um, not only is it hot and sunny because there's no clouds, um, but there's just no wind. Because well, you're in a bowl. You're like in between two mountains. Yeah, it's just, it's just dead air that just doesn't <laughs> move. And that's what, that was what's hot. But, of course, nothing came close to the, I oh, God, I feel like I'm swimming in my own sweat feeling that is out here. Uh, in fact, I've almost forgotten what it felt like. And, you know, I was coming in here today and just it just kept getting hotter as the sun <laughs> goes down. And that's not something I'm used to. Yeah, because, uh, well, because, you know, out in Southern California, it's like a desert heat. So, like, the minute the sun goes down, like, temperature starts dropping real quick. Here, that heat just stays to well into the night. And it's, you know, it's like, why is it still 87 degrees outside? It's 1030. The sun's been down for at least two hours. That's true. But, oh, well. But, yeah, back to Bushmills. Real quick, let me just finish up with this little segment here. Um like I said, you get a fifth of it for just over 30 bucks at your local liquor store. I think that's what I pick it up for. If you're wanting to get into Irish whiskey, which is definitely a more expensive end on your on your whiskeys, Bushmills is a good start because you're not going to break the bank trying to do it. You want to go get like a bottle of Jameson, you're looking at spending anywhere from 35 to $40, depending on where you go. Some places will do a sale on it. But Jameson is, is like, it's good, but it's kind of like that Jack Daniels to where like you're almost just like buying that brand and like, J- Jameson is Irish whiskey for people who don't know other whiskeys. Um, so step outside your comfort zone a little bit. Get some Bushmills. It's definitely worth a shot. No pun intended. I think I say that like every <laughs> fucking episode. <laughs> like it's almost obligatory at this point. But, if you weren't going to say it, I was. So. Yeah, so there you go. It's my fucking show. I got to say it. But um, I don't know if I've told I'm, I might have said it on another episode. But when I drink my whiskey, I drink it straight. Um, just because like that's the. I like the full flavor of it, and uh, I used to do two just regular size ice cubes. Then I got those uh, these big like one and a half inch by one and a half inch ice like cubes. It's, like just dominates the glass, and it's good for about two drinks. It's definitely the way to go with whiskeys if you're gonna do that. Yeah, you know you can get those things. Uh, they look like little uh, plastic ice cubes. You you chunk them in the freezer for a little bit, and they oh, don't yeah, they don't yeah. they don't melt. So yeah, you, you know you don't want it down your whiskey. Well, see, but I, I kind of like the I kind of like like it's because like the first. The first sip you're going to have, that's like 99.9% whiskey. And then, like, as you drink out of the glass, it gets just a little bit more diluted with water. So it's like a it's like a forgiveness factor for finishing it up, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I enjoy it that way. Some people are like, oh, you shouldn't put ice in your whiskey. Well, I live in East fucking Texas, or as we were just talking about, it's hot as shit here. So, you know, I want to put ice in my fucking drink. I'm an adult. I can do what I want. <laughs> that's right. But, um... So Max and I were discussing earlier on uh, Doritos because I was at our <laughs> local grocery store and they're having to buy one, get one sale on chips. And I, um, I really enjoy just plain Jane nacho cheese Doritos. So I got two bags for like $4. And let me tell you why that's wrong. All right. So <laughs> everyone remembers school lunches and before they went on with their health craze and everything, um, Doritos, you got your Cool Ranch, and you got your um, nacho cheese. I'm going to call those the Subway flavors uh, because you go to Subway and you get your sandwich and you want a chips and a drink. Well, the only Doritos they got, nacho cheese and Cool Ranch. And let me get this. Let me. All right. I had only known of those two for the longest time. I didn't even know any other Doritos existed. Um, until I started shopping on, uh, on my own as an adult. Um, 
let me tell you, those two, I don't know how they got popular, but I, I guess it's like with anything else. It's like the more more popular something is, obviously the worse it is. Um, so <laughs> That's a fair assessment. If everyone loves it, then it's actually garbage. So what I've come to discover is that there's a power tier. There's a tier ranking of Doritos chips, and the uh, Cool Ranch and Nacho Cheese are definitely among this bottom uh, this bottom tier, so they're like they're like the D tier. Oh yeah, no, probably even if there's a tier below D, like F tier, like F D. I would say C. You, you know D, what? A, maybe S. not the lowest. The only thing lower than that is the. Um, oh god, I can't. I can picture the back. It's the taco flavor. Oh what? Dude, yeah. the taco. Like I love the taco no, flavor. No, they're just it's that. Just, that was the original Doritos flavor. Exactly, and so that was the original, and then they kind of upgraded every single new iteration for me. Is better and nah, top know. top tier. We're talking. We got we got two flavors, right? We got salsa verde, which will always hold a special place in my heart. For that's the green best one, right? Yeah, that's okay. a green bag, and then the spicy sweet chili, which is going to be the purple bag. Um, no, no, that is absolute <laughs> fucking trash. Don't even buy that shit. It's no. why would you if you're getting spicy. It's got to be safe. Like, people who want, like, I want Asian Zing because it's sweet and spicy. You can stop eating. Stop it. Go eat a fucking stalk of celery because that shit is not, no. Those are not supposed to be meat together. They are supposed to be met together. And let me tell you why. It's, <laughs> it's, it's because, you see, you have to have a, uh, a TIQ. I was, was going to call TIQ, which is your taste intelligence quota. So you have to have at least a TIQ of over 200 to understand the sweet and spicy. They they mix together so well, and you get all these different flavor profiles and just these mixtures when you're eating them. It's it's just absolutely delicious, and they really capitalized on something great here that I think okay, a lot of hang people... On. Like, you're talking about this like it's like fine cuisine. We're talking about fucking Doritos here. It's yeah. like three seventy five a bag. Did, if... I, did I mention I'm cheap? Okay, yeah, that's and it's not three seventy five. You can get them on a good deal for two fifty. Um, sometimes even two dollars for their family size. With yeah. like, with like Walmart. I don't, I don't ever go to Walmart. Oh yeah, Walmart has them for low. Uh, a lot of times, you know, Brooks or Super One. Um, you know, they'll have them for for like a bundle price or anything like that. Um, yeah, if you're paying more, okay, if you're going to the store and you pay the retail price on a bag of chips. You are doing it wrong, my friend. Go find another store or something else because they print those prices high so that stores can t sell you a discount. So, uh, anyways, back to power rankings. We got, let's talk about the other ones. We got spicy nacho, which is, it's nacho cheese, but just a direct upgrade in every single function. So there's, <laughs> if you, if I'm going to eat nacho cheese... I'm just going to get the spicy nacho because I get the same flavor as the nacho cheese, but that little extra kick to it. It's not too much. It's just that little extra kick, uh, you know, really, really enhances everything else. It's, just, it's a direct upgrade. There's, there's no other choice. Then on the tier above that, so that, that's got its own little tier. The tier above that, uh, wait, yeah, yeah. You got jalapeno poppers. Or poppin' jalapeno or whatever. I, I, the, I, don't, I don't like those. Like because I don't like I don't like a like a faux jalapeno flavor. Like if if you're gonna cut up pickle jalapenos, put on some, or you're gonna like grill some jalapenos like with your steak or whatever. That's perfectly fine. When you do like that jalapeno dust that they just like bake and like shred up, I don't. It just doesn't taste real anymore. No, no, that dust is the best part, and it's like a it's like a salsa verde light. If if the spicy nacho is a direct upgrade of uh, regular nacho. Then the uh, salsa verde is a direct upgrade of pop and jalapeno. Um, also sharing the same pop and jalapeno is the uh, what is it? The Doritos blasted or something? Something <laughs> stupid thing they came? No, it's the uh, it's the the buffalo the buffalo wing one. And I thought I was like, this is gonna be just absolute garbage. It's like buffalo wings and blue cheese. How could they make that work? Well, it actually pays off pretty well. It's a very risky. Uh, you know, endeavor here by a Doritos company, um, but I think it, it does pay off. It's not the best, you know, but it, it could be a lot worse. You know, that's that's about a mid tier level there. Um, so, S still still better than nacho cheese. Oh, definitely. Yeah, if you're buying, if nacho you cheese is the fucking A team, it's 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 the red team. Like literally, it's in the red bag. It's it doesn't matter. It's the times have changed. Uh, we have driverless cars now. Doritos is stand. They're uh, one step ahead of the game. 
They're putting their flavors on tacos shells for Taco Bell. They've been doing that for years. They have. They're still but the nacho cheese ones are still the best. Uh, the nacho cheese ones no, are going to be the best. get your hands too dirty. If if you have to go with one if Doritos wants to make a power play in 2019, this is what they'll do. Sorry, I'm slamming on the table. This is what they're going to do, all right? They're going to tell Taco Bell, "Look, listen. We've got some good flavors." And we're going to put those flavors in your taco shells. Keep the Cool Ranch. I don't care. Keep the nacho cheese. Well, because it makes money. It does. You're right. Those two do. But you want to introduce something new? You get Taco Bell to get on your game and get some of those other flavors in there. Here's what I don't like. Taco Bell has been doing nothing but giving me random ass boxes of whatever they just decided to just pull out of thin air. Oh, you want a chalupa? Uh, you want a seven hey, layer hang on, hang on. I just had that five dollar box today, and let me tell you, I love the chalupa thing, like the soft shell thing. Yes, I, I agree. That is delicious. Fucking love it. That is one of the best things. That and then those uh, those chipotle chicken grillers. Yeah, those, Th- those are got to right. be like the two best things on the menu. I like. I, I agree with you on that, but here's what I hate. I can buy a chalupa at Taco Bell, a la carte, for like four bucks or whatever. Mm-hmm. I get the five dollar bundle, and I'm like, great! I got a chalupa, I got a drink, and then they just throw in other garbage that they just found. It's like, who wants to eat this stupid five layer burrito with half the layers just being nacho cheese? And it's not even the good kind. It's not. It's not. It's just a. And then they're like, oh, well, how about you had a seven-layer burrito? And then two of those layers are just sauces, so it's not, it's still a five-layer. just layer. sour cream. You're just like two layers of sour cream. Oh, I would love shit. some sour cream and lettuce. Fuck sour cream. Here's what you do as a company. You make – you you allow me to choose what I put in that box, you know, something like, like that. Like I'll, Yeah, like the, the, there's like, a, like eight items, and you get to pick three, and that, you just throw them in your box. The pick three, yes. it's work, It worked for Carl's Jr., we didn't have that out here. That's true. That's true. Um, well, let me tell you, Car- Car- Carl's <laughs> Jr. Carl's Jr. is um, it's it's not okay. I've never been to I've never been to Carl's Jr. and been happy with my purchase. <laughs> like afterwards, I'm, McDonald's. Holy I, shit! I'm just like, why did I eat this? It didn't fill me up. It was kind of overpriced. I just don't feel good about it afterwards. But you know what? When you're in a shopping center with Carl's Jr. on one end and Subway on the other, and you've had Subway for 12 days in a row, sometimes you just want some, you know, greasy, soggy, slightly cold French fries for three dollars. And I that's think, what uh, I, th- I think you're venting here, to be honest, man. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, Carl's Jr. had some good ideas, but bad execution. Taco Bell has great execution and just some horrible ideas. Yeah. I mean, I understand that you know most of the food is just it's just cheap, processed, whatever. But it's just meat, cheese, and we taco. To, my, my point is <laughs> here: shell. we need to get some more uh, flavors for the Dorito Locos tacos. So okay, that's like, it. Here's here's something that I noticed about Doritos and Taco Bell. There's one demographic that goes balls deep into both of these ventures. Gamers. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I, gamers. I, like, I hate them too, but right now they're driving a fucking economy. And they're the only thing that's going to make Avatar not be number one. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I, there's two kinds of people that I really just dislike. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. <laughs> um, gamers... And musicians. And you're both of those. I am both of those, and I have chosen to fill my life with both of those. That's the, all I hang out with. <laughs> and maybe that's why I hate these people so much because I just. Because, like, it, it's all that you're around. Yeah, uh, that's fair. That's I, it, I can understand that. It's like a, a pale reflection, and, you know, it's it, it makes sense that, you know, it's like some sort of cruel irony that, of course. But, anyways, let me tell you why those kind of people really aggravate me. Uh, and this is just a broad statement, so if it doesn't apply to you, then... Uh, oh, no, no, no. Here on the Whiskey Dan Show, <laughs> after we get a couple in, it is blanket statements left and right. Like, but like once we hit that once we hit that 15 to 18 minute mark, we are just plowing through. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Uh, being a gamer <laughs> back in the day... Pro gamer here. Yes. Um, actually, yes. So being a gamer back in the day meant it it meant something but you didn't want it to mean something you know it was like nobody talked about how much of a gamer they were 
or else you got your ass beat. Or, or just made fun of, like, you're just like, hey, my gamer score is, like, over 8,000, like, well, yeah, shut up, faggot, you know, like, that's that's how it went. Yeah, of course. Um, now, being a gamer is cool. Is it? I, it well, it, it that's what you're saying, so, I would say we've reached a point in society where most people have played a video game in their life, if not on their phones or something like that. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Uh, and it's no longer regarded as some sort of like weird kind of hobby. Um, yeah, it's definitely no longer niche. Yeah, which is which. If you go back to my Dorito statement, the more popular something gets, the worse it gets. And and Fortnite. You, yeah, and, <laughs> and you may and you may think you know oh well that's just a you know that's just a, a jaded way to look at it. Or it's just a cynical the way to look at it. But no, it's the truth. If oh, you, yeah, the Beatles it, fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I well, that's that's for another story. But so <laughs> when something's popular, a lot of the time um, it has to it has to gain money. It has to be profitable. So if somebody's doing something, um, like right now, for instance, you know this this could be a passion project. You know, you're not looking to make any money out of it. It's not very popular. Uh, but then that's a good thing because you can say what you want. You can do what you want. You don't have to care about marketing or demographics or anything like that. Yeah. And I feel that's how gaming used to be, where you just, you know, you had, you know, obviously you wanted to stay in business and you wanted right. to sell some stuff, but you wanted to do it because you wanted to be there. Yeah, because you wanted it, to share your vision and your talent with people. Yeah, because like a lot of those like classic games that like we grew up with, uh, like whether it be on the Super Nintendo N64, PC, PlayStation, something like that, it was a team of like. 15 to 30 dudes just made something that they really wanted to do. And women. And women. There, there, there are, especially in the marketing department. It's always funny, like, on the credits on, like, those old games, like, marketing, it's always, like, Linda and Meg and Pam. <laughs> Which is funny because some of those ads in PC gaming had the hugest, f the biggest tits. And it's Tiggle like... old bitties. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and, you know... But that was... But those marketing ads were made by women because women know that that's what we want to see is the tits. Especially if you're selling it to 16-year-old gamers. That's the truth. Absolutely, because they're not seeing any tits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're, but, they're, you know what? The, the funny that you say that there actually is an ad that just explicitly describes... Uh, that I, I'd have to look it up and, and just, you know show you, but it's it's funny. It's like a PC ad, and it's like talks about how console console gamers have never seen breasts in real life. No that, fucking and way. And that PC gamers no fucking have. Way. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, well, here, go, go ahead and pull it up. Yeah, I can I, I I can stall for a little bit I'll here. Pull that up. Yeah, I'll let you, you ramble on a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Because like holy shit. But um, yeah, it's funny that we talk about you know, like with the passion project with the games because like you know Mortal Kombat. A lot of people know this, but the first one was made by four dudes, like four guys. Like one guy did sound, one guy did the programming, another guy did like the character design, and the, I think the other guy did just, uh, I think Ed Boone, I think he did programming as well. But it was only four dudes made the whole shebang. That that franchise is phenomenally successful. Granted, you know, now like the newest Mortal Kombat's got hundreds of people on the team because, you know, granted, games are far more complex than they are now. They're... they're now than they were then and i think that that's one reason why that video games um is no longer a niche thing because it's um far more accessible it's, well one it's a lot cheaper to put it's a lot cheaper to buy a console in video games today than it was in 1993 just like if you adjust for inflation a super nintendo costs more than an xbox one today or a ps4 or what have you Granted, PCs were still crazy expensive, and you can easily drop three grand building a PC if you want to get all the super duper crazy shit on it, which, which, which I think is kind of interesting because we're talking about you know gamers and being you know like it used to not mean like you you didn't want it to mean something, and now you get PC gamers that just have this massive pissing contest with each other about how awesome their PC is and how much money that they sunk into that. And I'm like, why did you spend so much money on that? Because in six six months to a year, you're going to have to replace all that shit to make it to what it is now because Crisis 4 is going to come out and your, your toaster of a computer is not going to run that. Look, my computer can run Fallout 4 on high. That's all I cared about. And that's, that's the limit because most of the games I play were made before 2007. I agree. I agree. Um... Except for Rise of Storm 2 Vietnam. Not enough people play that game. It's so fucking good. <laughs> I tried to plug that in. I should have put that on my underrated episode, the last one that I did. I yeah. talked about underrated shit. Oh, yeah. Rise of well. Storm 2 Vietnam. It's on Steam. If you got a PC and you don't have it, 
you're not winning. It is historically accurate. The Vietnam battles, it's a lot of fun. And there's there's a it's a, just a big shit post. That's all it is. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, so, back back to the ad. Yeah, I actually I actually did find the ad. It's an ad in um I want to say it was like PlayStation Magazine or something. They probably put in a bunch of different, you know, magazines like that at the time. Yeah, sure. It's for the uh, 3D effects chip. Um, or I'm sorry, the uh, was it a Voodoo or just 3D effects? No, I think it's uh, hold on. Um, no, I think it's just for their. I think it's just for 3D effects at just their accelerator line or something like that. Oh, okay, but anyways, cool. it shows a the picture. It shows a uh, like a little CRT television, uh, and it says. It says on the screen, there are two kinds of gamers in this world. The ones who still play on consoles and the ones who've actually seen breasts. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, Im imagine in 2019 if, like, if, if, so, if, if they made that kind of advertisement again today. You know, like, like, you know, giving shit on, like, Xbox and PlayStation players. Like, imagine the fucking outcry you'd have on Twitter about that. Yeah, I think there's, uh, you know, there's a lot to be said about that. When it's such a niche, you know, you can get kind of get away with stuff like this because it doesn't make, you know, national news if somebody uh, oh, yeah, hurts exactly. someone's feelings. Um, but, you know, back in the day, it was all just kind of, you know, flinging whatever you could at your opponent to kind of do stuff. It's kind of like the whole, you know, Sega versus Nintendo Wars and all that Sega fun stuff. Genesis does what Nintendo don't. <laughs> Dude, that, that is, like, the best fucking game. Like, Nintendo don't. It's like, you just disregard that fucking child's toy, 8-bit shit, nobody wants 16-bit motherfucker, like, right on the front of the console. Like, that is just, like... That, that that is a big dick energy move right there. <laughs> yeah, those guys at Sega, um, they knew what they were doing. Problem was, then like Super Nintendo came out, and then you get Donkey Kong Country, and there you go. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, Donkey Kong. She does forget what I was gonna say. Oh well, that's it's gone. Pond. That means it's like, gone now. <laughs> well, see the thing that, that that's the beauty of having the alcohol in front of you. Like if you forget what to say, you just take a sip, and then you'll think of something. You. <laughs> But um, so with gamers, you, you don't like them because I don't like them because they it's like it's like a lifestyle kind of thing. But it shouldn't be. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think it should be. I think you should have passion and I, I don't think you should be afraid of your passion. <laughs> oh, pa I got passion. <laughs> Passion for boot. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you should be afraid of your passion, no matter what it be. If it's video games, if it's music, if it's standing on the side of the road and twirling a sign while you're dancing, I don't really care. Your passion, you know, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else, uh, just do what you want. That's fine. Um, what I do have an issue with is just blatant consumerism in the video game industry. So, like Black Friday. Oh yeah, so yeah, Black Friday, um, you know these these gaming companies that will just take a, an IP and just run the name into the ground for the sake of money. Um, Looking in your direction, EA. <laughs> yeah. You killed Battlefront. That was a wonderful. God, I'm like kind of mad. All they had to do was just make an HD remake of Star Wars Battlefront Two and just put it on the new console, and everybody would have bought it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And it, it, there's not the German army didn't have snipers <laughs> that were women. Why are you doing this, Battlefield Five? <laughs> it's just honestly, I've just come to accept that it's just better if you don't think about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see, and that's another reason. Uh, Rising Storm Two Vietnam is a uh, it's a uh, pretty historically accurate in terms of guns and uh, the people that fucking shot them because the American Army didn't use women. I don't care about equality. This is 1969. We are fighting in Da Nang. I don't know. Like, I'm just saying. Just saying. There weren't women. Liberation of Normandy. That's all I'm saying. I have no, I have no problem with women in video games. Um, I have no problem with women equality. But you know, when it comes down to it, like equals equal, well, let's throw hands then, and like <laughs> let's see who's gonna win there. Just say, granted, there's probably a lot of women that can kick my ass. So that okay, that's. <laughs> I I would not deny that. Um, yeah, I I think that's <laughs> just gaming and 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 musicians. I don't know why. I'm a musician myself. Okay, okay. So, so like, gaming, because cause it's, like, a lifestyle that doesn't really need to be there, and the fact that it's just, like, overloaded with consumerism. Consumerism and, like, blatant, 
you know, I'm going to love every single game in this series. Like, like, because... like, like the Loot Crate fanboys? Where it's <laughs> yeah. just like, why are you spending like 30 bucks a month to get something that you're... Like, if you want to get like a poster for Fallout, just go buy the fucking poster. Well, why like... do you subscribe to the Loot Crate? It's like having somebody that buys presents for you. So it's like filling that void of, oh, hey, this person likes me and they're getting me gifts. Um, just try to get a girlfriend. It's not that hard. <laughs> well, I mean, you just could be nice to women. You could have a girlfriend and she could be cheap and then not buy you anything. So that, you know, there's definitely a market there. I think the people that, in, you know, invented the whole loot crate and whatnot, I think it's a brilliant idea. Oh yeah. Because they're, they're making, they're making hand over fist with these poor saps oh, over here. I wish I would have thought of something Well, like, like it's that. like that in the Funko Pops. Like what the fuck? Why do people buy that? It's so stupid. It's not even an action figure. It's true. Yeah. It's not like, it, like if it was an action figure set for in the series like that'd be cool as hell like stranger things action figures like and, and i like stranger things a lot i wouldn't buy the action figures but people would cream themselves over so buying these funko pops that are designed to be collectible that aren't going to hold any value if, if something hits the market and is designed to be like a collector's item it's not going to be collectible unless it's designed by someone famous so if someone if someone famous or if they you know run out of limited stock so like if somebody right. if some if a great guitar designs a guitar and they only make 300 of them as a collector's edition then yeah, it'll, yeah. it would or, yeah or, 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 or like those toys r us gold nintendo 64s or yeah. but but if you think about it this way like say like you, you get like a like back when starter used to do all the jerseys for the nfl like a, a starter jersey but like it's bo jackson's jersey from like 1985 yeah. Like, and there's only a there's only a set amount of those made. Like, that wasn't designed to be a collector's item. That was made for Raiders fans back in the '80s when they actually won Super Bowls. <laughs> but you know, but and that's like a massive collector's item, like like a Joe Namath jersey from 1969, 1971, something like that. Like that would be a collector's item, but it wasn't designed to be one. Those Funko Pops is just some cheap piece of shit vinyl that Hastings used to stock, and now Hastings is out of business, so people just buy it off of Amazon with their Prime account, don't even think about it, they just add to the fucking cart, and they're not cheap. I thought they'd be like 6 to $10. They're like, they're what, like 20 I don't know. I, I do, honestly could not I could not tell you the price, because I've never because been interested. I don't give a shit. I've never been interested enough to say, well, how much is this? Yeah. Um, and, and it goes right back to the popularity thing, right? So it's easy to market, right? These, these, uh, these, uh, you know, collectibles, they look very, very similar. Uh, they're not, there's, there's no uh, passion put into these projects. Um, now, in, in, uh, I'm not going to try to, I'm trying to not sound like a huge weeb here, but Japan, oh boy, here J we go. J Japan does a lot of things better. Um, and one of those is collectible figures or dolls, as people might say. But so these collect I, I, I'm just, is this like a vinyl doll, like a plastic. Like uh, an it can it can be uh, multiples of you know different kinds. Or There's like a whole thing. No. Collectible body. Pillow. <laughs> um, and current, I, I don't own any. I'm just gonna put that for on the record. I don't I don't own any. Um, you know any sort of things like that. I will say you know just in quality versus those versus. You know, if you go to a Hot Topic or a GameStop here, what you'll see, um, the quality is much better. There's a lot more detail into creating the character that could be two dimensional or three dimensional, and bringing it into, you know, the the real world kind of thing. Uh, it's it you know it's a little bit more maybe sculpting, maybe. you know, painting and less than just like oh we're just gonna. This hey, this kind of looks like this character from this TV show. Let's make a doll out of them and sell it for thirty dollars. Yeah, well, like because maybe like because with the United States, our culture is just like oh, it broke, throw it away. But like maybe in I, I mean I don't know any Japanese people, but maybe more in their culture they want to preserve and keep things, so they make things to a finer, more durable quality. You know, rather than just something that's cheap, that's just that's just made for that one sale. Yeah, you know that, what I mean? that that could be true. Um, well, I mean, think about it. Like even like the classic gaming market, like Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, or Super Famicom games, and Mega Drive games over there. Like you find them in better quality and far cheaper. Just just in general, and there's a lot more like used game shops, and people still buy them and purchase them. Oh yeah, and 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 speaking of like game shops, used game shops, I've also got a lot of Mecha. Um, that's a huge thing of their models, model kits and stuff. Like BattleBots? Um, no, like, uh, like, like plastic models. So kits, um, that you buy, 
you glue the pieces together, you paint them, oh, okay. um, and it was just a huge. I was astounded at how much they have over there. Um, well, see, because I think the biggest market for that over here is like those like World War II kind of figurines. <laughs> and we'll just like it's like okay, uh, I I have a. Uh, uh, it's a it's a Hellcat and uh, F4 F Hellcat that I built uh, like two years ago and I fucking love it. It's in my bedroom. And oh, could you imagine if that hobby took off like a, like gaming did? Oh my! <laughs> like we'll see. Like well, one, like I think that that'd be amazing because like that's people's like skill and talent being poured in. Like like gaming, there's like skill and talent that's involved in that. But I, it feels like so cheap. Like people are like, oh, I'm like I'm like world ranked in Overwatch. Like yeah, who gives a shit? Korea is still gonna beat you. You know, like, 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 I don't care how high you are ranked on Overwatch. You're still getting on Shad base. We both know that. So if you don't know what Shad base is, do not, do not look that up. It is a deep, dark hole. <laughs> don't go there. So uh, talking about, um, let me get, I'll get this straight. I, I do play video games. I do a lot of music and I hang out in various communities, uh, of the sort, um, well, you mean you work in a music shop? You're that's gonna, you're gonna run into. That's true. <laughs> um, so, I don't. I know. I said I hate gamers and I hate musicians. They're the two worst type of people to hang out with, because you have the two. Um, you have just really, really bad, just awful people in those departments. It seems like they just like attract, uh, like honey and flies. Uh, you know, gaming and music. It's just. You just get some... Well, because I, I think that those people that are like into gaming and that are into music are very indoorsy people. So they're going to be into those activities because you don't have to go outside for really either of those. That's true. You know what I mean? Then again, there's probably... Also, you get the coolest t-shirts out of both of those. There's some probably some just really big assholes that, you know, are in the hiking... You know, I, I don't know. That could be... Like, also, like, like, like some camping bros. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, bro, that, what like, kind of tent you got? Oh, I got this one from, like, Academy. Like, no, you got to get this super deluxe ultra... Like, all right, man. A whole subculture, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure like, that there is, but, like, that is, like... N that's far more niche than, like, video games and music. Well, see, and this is the... I think my thing... I think my, like, my issue with gamers is that... With most most of the people are eventually gonna grow out of that because I remember when I was like in high school and I was like super big and like collecting a lot of games and trying to preserve them. I'm still like that, but I'm not as outward with it. But with the musician thing is that is I think that musicians are far more susceptible to just being a complete dick <laughs> about like how good they are at playing music. And I'm like, hey, like if you think you can make a buck at doing this, you know go for it. You know, I, I appreciate that. But at the end of the day, be, basing your entire like livelihood off of popularity is a really bad idea. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and it's just, to be a successful musician, you kind of have to accept the fact that everyone, most everyone is better than you that's a musician and if you accept that you'll find that um you'll see success a lot more in a lot more places and and you'll feel better about your own playing ability yeah, cause and you're, you're not constantly putting yourself down like man that dude ripped the awesome fucking solo like i'll never be able to do that because then you're constantly kind of stuck in that loop rather than like hey we were able to do this and then we got some people to kind of like it yes there will always be somebody better um than than what you're doing and that goes for anything, but you know, especially for music. A lot of musicians kind of, I feel like, once you reach a certain threshold, of like, oh, I don't really know anything. Oh, wait, actually, I think I do know something. And then there's just a big jump into like, well, I know everything, and I could tell you everything there is to ever know about music. And don't you dare say that I'm wrong in this way. Uh, you just have to really humble yourself in that regard. And that's why I hate a lot of musicians is because they don't. Well, see, because, like, I think that we could apply that to just about anything. Like, like w w once you hit, like, that semi-pro to professional level of, like, whatever it, whatever it may be. It could be cooking, music, literature, you know, like, because um, as a, I, I do have a BS in history. And um, I've met a lot of people that are really into that and then you do run into those type of people to where like they're right 100 percent of the time there's no room for interpretation and i think with something as subjective as music you gotta leave room for interpretation on stuff like that like like especially with music being an art form a very fluid art form you can't just allow like like concrete like right and wrong because that's not how that works yeah i hope 
I hope in the next few years we see uh, a video game crash for one. <laughs> like like an eighty three, yes. wherever that where like the market just gets oversaturated. Oh, or... that would be that would be a dream come true. Well, honestly, I think that that might happen. Like honestly, like if you log into Steam or you hell even the Nintendo eShop, there's so many titles out there, and I don't know what I'm supposed to buy and play. I think the money's gonna run out eventually. You think so? Uh, I I hope so. I think that's the only thing that can save this stupid hobby of mine. <laughs> um. And then with musicians, um, and this isn't your average everyday musician, but just your radio dribble, um, or dribble, I guess I should say. Uh, the radio is just, they're obviously they're playing what the money is telling them to play. <laughs> no, well, I mean, hell, the radio's been like that since the fucking 70s. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but with the advent of these new technologies, and I say new, it's been around for a while, but with it becoming more prevalent uh, with streaming services or uh, to publish their own music and well, not like, having well, to go well, through What I'm label. doing right now with the show, like oh, there, there was no way I could be able to get this out. Granted, this is like bottom of the barrel shit. Like if you're <laughs> listening to this, like, hey, I'm glad that we got some listeners on here, but. You could probably do something slightly more constructive. I don't think you'll have any <laughs> listeners for a while. You got to get a shtick. Eh, I don't have a shtick yet. I'm usually drunk by the end of the show, so <laughs> that kind of works. <laughs> but, but yeah, like yeah, like it, it's it's always where that money's gonna go, and then eventually you kind of run to a point to where the where money does not equal talent. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And then you just run into shit music, and that's why pop sucks. And that is why pop sucks. That is why most pop sucks. Sometimes they get it right. And, and you can't you can't judge a whole style. Um, you could have pop styled music um, that's actually really good, uh, you know, vocal wise, lyric wise. Um, You'll never convince me that Cardi B is good. I, I, you're right. I will not. <laughs> I don't think I could convince myself that. Um, oh, okay. okay, this is what, okay. I was I was talking to somebody about this. I was talking to a group of women, which is probably the wrong audience to talk about this too. But I was talking about how Cardi B and like other female rappers were like, "Oh yeah, like eat my pussy out." Like that's not an aggressive statement. Like if there's like a there's a rapper like you gonna suck my motherfucking dick. Like damn, like that's like like that, that that's much more of an aggressive statement. Like when a woman is trying to like like a a, a woman rapper is trying to like put like sex on something like that. Like that's not. I don't. It sounds like weak, and it, it it just doesn't work right. I don't think women should be rappers unless they're making booty jams. <laughs> I, I don't think we can say that women can't be rappers. Um, I'm not saying that either, unless you're making booty jams. <laughs> I mean, I just think you know, maybe it just hasn't been done correctly yet. I don't know. I don't listen to a lot of rap. I, I'm just gonna come out there and say it. God, um, fucking white people. Am I right? <laughs> Uh, so I, I mean, I probably not the best to qualify. I don't probably don't qualify for talking about that, but, um, I think, you know, if you've got the, if you've got the talent, it doesn't matter what, or not talent, if you've got the passion and you could craft that, I'm just rambling here. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, no, okay, about. okay. For, for sure, there's definitely an audience there. Like, there, because there's women that just love listening to women rappers, and that's fine because they're going to make money off of that. People are going to enjoy the music, but I reserve my right to complain about it. That's why I made this whole show. That and to give the listeners something to drink because when I walked into a liquor store, I had no idea what I wanted to buy. Also, when I was, in, when I was visiting you and you were in California, it, like, it, I don't know why it stuck with me, but the fact that they were just selling, like, liquor at the walmart i was like what the fuck like this shit, like what the, you gotta go to like the store like on the edge of the county for this shit you can't just buy this where you're gonna buy everything else to be fair it's locked up no 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 like no the fucking jack daniels was just like on there like just like a can of coffee uh, no no they used to be but now they they had to put it in case because people kept stealing it um <laughs> I can't believe they didn't see that coming. <laughs> or the worst, I think the worst thing is when people would take alcohol and just chug it in the store. I know I'd never seen that, but they would go to the That's self a check. Chad they, move. they go to the self check, and there's a big ass sign that says, "Alcohol is not permitted at the self check." And you every it seems like every time I went there, I would see somebody with like just a bunch of groceries and like beer or wine or something in their cart, mm -hmm. and they would try to go scan it. And the person would have to be like, oh, "You can't have alcohol." What? 
what are you talking about? I can't buy alcohol. Look, there's a sign right here. It's against the law. You can't purchase it for yourself and for, you know, good reason. So you don't have, because uh, the machine's not going to check your ID. No. Um, it's just, just, just stupid, the stupidity, I, I suppose, <laughs> of people. But yeah, so um, hey, here's just, one thing. So here's one thing I don't understand. California versus Texas. In California, nobody really uh, gives a crap what you do, really. I mean, it's like everyone's just like, oh, cool, man. Hey, whatever. That's that's cool. You know, you get some real assholes and some real, you know, jerks that are just way too intense and will, you know, scream at you from the side of the road. But that's a different story. I'm just talking about just the normal people there. Just like general, like, workplace society. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Okay. So, but here in Texas, it's so... And this is what baffles me. So everyone in Texas loves to drink, right? That's like a big Texas thing, you know, like the hold my beer. You know, that's the, like the hold my beer. Like, like we, we don't sip a shot. We just shoot that yes. right back. Yeah. Yeah. Te- Texans love their alcohol, <laughs> but we love our big ass Baptist churches. I, I don't understand. <laughs> Dude, I know. Like I was thinking about that. the other day. I was, I was talking with, with my coworker about that. Um, just like, like with these mega churches and stuff and how like, it's just like, like, why the fuck you have a gift shop in your church? Like, that, just, that blows our mind. Like, in just the fact that, like, yeah, like, everybody wants to drink, but every, but half those people that drink like that go to churches that are like, if you ever drink alcohol, you're going to hell. I don't understand. Um, maybe you know a little bit more about this than me, but where – is there actual, like, a phrase or passage somewhere in the Bible? Where do people get that teaching from that alcohol is bad or okay. that, that's evil – or that it's a sin. Or God, I know, I get it that like if you're drunk all the time, no. obviously that's not good. But like, what's what's the difference? What's what's the uh, what's the reasoning behind that? Okay, I, I think I think that's just one of those things that um, religion has just grabbed and then just ran with just for way too far. And because the Bible does prohibit drunkenness, where you're just like. Piss. I'm not because because if you're drunk, you're making bad decisions. You're not giving a shit about yourself or anybody else around you. And and so and that's why the Bible prohibits that. Jesus made water into wine, and if you're gonna be one of those assholes, it's like it was uh, it was grape juice. Then why the hell is it written as wine in every iteration of the Bible? He made it like that so everybody could have a good time at the wedding. And also, you couldn't you have to have grape juice either sealed or refrigerated. This was in Mesopotamia. <laughs> it's hot. You can't have hot grape juice without it going bad, so you fermented it to keep it. Granted, wine then was different than wine now, but it was a means of preservation. You could A lot of people would mix it in with water to kind of dilute it so you didn't get so drunk during the day. But that's what you did to keep it, and you got like the vitamins, the antioxidants from all the wine. I, I, think, I think the big thing is like everything in moderation. And since we live in you know, Baptist Bible belt around here, man, there, it is black and white. There's no such thing as moderation. Either you, you are, or you ain't, you know, there's, there's no room for, for mistakes. Yeah. I think it also could be based on the, uh, you know, the Puritan society of just America in general, just how it started. Um, you know, very well, like in Massachusetts, very heavily, you know, Puritan influence. Um, and even, even now you have some, what were they called? Blue laws, um, you know, where it's like you can't even buy alcohol on Sundays in some areas. Oh, some yeah, yeah. All the liquor stores around here are closed on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every liquor store. And if, if you're going to like a restaurant or like a theater or something like that and you want to order a drink, you have to wait until noon. Granted, I don't know why you'd want to get a drink at, you know, 1030 in the morning. Because it, it, like, if you're drinking at 1030 in the morning, you have alcohol at your home. <laughs> so when's the threshold from the evening? So let's say it's Saturday night. Hey, you're partying up at two a.m. and you want a shot. Is that is it now Sunday? So now you you can't have that, or how's that how's that work? I think around here most bars close at one, which is on Saturday crazy. Night. Yeah, because because out in a big city they close at like what four in the morning. Oh yeah, at least some shit like that. Because I got because uh, I got a buddy who lives in Denton. And he was talking about like. Because he was down here for a little bit, and he was saying, like, yeah, it's crazy. He was like, oh, yeah, last calls at, like, you know, 1245 or 1230 or some shit. And he was like, what? But then it's, like, 3 in the morning for that shit. Yeah. And Denton isn't even that big, but, like, it's just, like, so close to Dallas, and there's so many bars and stuff out there. So it's just, uh, I don't know. The the spot that we're in, it's very small-town vibe, even though there's a lot of people. 
I say a lot of people out here. Too many people. Too much fucking traffic. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway. Okay, first of all, all right. I, I might not have told you, but you have to finish the drink by the end of the show. So uh, uh, get to sipping. I don't want to. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not bad. If you're thinking about, if you're on the fence about buying this, it's not bad. I just, like I said before, I don't like alcohol very much. It tastes like cough syrup to me, all of it. Well, see, like, I always think it's funny, like, the, the first time people drink, you know, when they're, like, 19 or whatever, and they're like, oh, I don't really like the way it tasted, so I didn't really get into it. But uh, I didn't really care for the way it tasted, but I liked the way that it made me feel. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, I can just do this all the time now. This is awesome. And then, like, oh, I have a headache, and it hurts to pee. <laughs> so I should get that checked out. Yeah, once again, everything in moderation. But uh, I think I think uh, I think we're at a good stop point here. We've gone on quite a bit longer because we're gonna have a guest. I think this is gonna how it's usually gonna go with the guest. Sorry guys. No man. Uh, I, <laughs> I think it's great because now I get like a lot of dialogue. I would never thought to ramble on about gamers. Hashtag gang weed. But <laughs> gamers rise up. Gamers rise up. Everybody, everybody write gang weed on the ballot. <laughs> God dang it. Well, since we're finishing up, I'm going to do a little shout out to myself here. So, uh, okay. All right. come yeah. On yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Plug plug anything. Plug my stuff. Um, I'm making music and you can listen to it online. Um, my SoundCloud, you can search. Oh, shoot. I forgot the name of mine. Oh, uh, I think it's under Max Dannenberg. Yeah, is it your Fiverr? I do have a Fiverr. Uh, the Fiverr is Lenny Danny. Uh, if you want me to say anything, Sing anything, make any music, come on, shoot me some money. And, and let I, me tell you, that stuff is uh, real tight. I will do it, yeah. You will you might hear the theme um, in this episode. Oh, my Facebook. My Facebook is Maxwell Dannenberg. It's my Facebook page uh, for all my music. Uh, and then on there, you'll find the links to the SoundCloud and stuff that I can't remember because I've drank probably an equivalent to two and I mean, a half I can, shots of whiskey. I, I, I can throw your link on the SoundCloud for this. Oh, shoot. Yeah, absolutely. I'll do that, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, Fiverr, I've been working with them for a while. It's pretty fun it's just to meet people all over the world and say, hey, I need this song. And then you go, boom, baby, there it is. So if you listen to the intro music, hopefully uh, here has, I'm sorry, Dan uh, here has. Um, Oof, I'll have to cut that one. Out. <laughs> and Maybe that not. Post, um, uh, has, uh, shoot, I lost my train of thought because I was. I, I, I'm 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 gonna put that intro music on there. Yes, and then, and then we'll. Uh, and that was made by uh, by me. Max here. That was made by me. Yeah. Um. So don't, in his own living room. I actually it was in another room, but <laughs> I did mix it in my living room. So there's that too. But yeah. Um. At at any rate, uh, thank you for tuning in to the Whiskey Dan Radio Show. We're glad to have you along. Our guest today was Max. Thanks. Uh, I'll oh, be back. Yeah, he will probably be back considering he lives like right next to me now, which is kind of nice considering it's better than being halfway across a fucking continent. But <laughs> but um, yeah, he'll definitely be back on the show. Uh, thanks again for tuning into the Whiskey Dan Radio Show. If you'd like to write into the show, please uh, email me at whiskeydanradio at gmail.com. If you'd like to have any suggestions about topics or any alcohol, or if you'd like to be on the show, please. Um, Go ahead and send it to that email, or if you have my phone number, you can call me up anytime. Thanks again for tuning in. This is uh, your host, Whiskey Dan, signing off.